offense to Gambit because they're playing some solid Counter-Strike right now. But what we saw from Cloud9 on the first map, that was simply not good enough. And it's going to be a CT-sided start for Gambit. This is where I expect good old Gambit to sit there and have all the protocols, all the positions, everything ready, right? And much more of what we saw on Vertigo. Look, last time Cloud9 played Inferno, on their T side, it took them a very long time to pierce through Mouseboard's defense. They oh, won yeah. the gun round, they converted after that, but then it was a draw of seven rounds before they finally found the solution. So you cannot let that happen again for Cloud9. We said, momentum-wise, they can be extremely good, they can be powerful. They've showed it to us against very good teams. Mouseboard's two maps, 6-1-8, one lead, they can do it. But can they fight back when they run dry, when they don't have the ideas, they don't have the kills? A couple of men we need to mention right here. Floppy used to be an ace, used to be the you know the difference maker for, for Cloud9. We have S tag as well. Now it's time for them to shine. Oh, Axel. He does get tap tap, but he throws one back of his own. He makes S tag pay the price a little bit. They're gonna start and push their way up mid. Axel taking a few pop shots in the dark through the smoke. He's able to connect one onto Woxic, but the Fanny's in a good position. He's waiting it out. Mezzi runs straight oh! into it. Oh, and he gets the second. Oh, that's just not good for Cloud9's pistol round. They're locked in, they're boxed in. And Gambit are throwing all the punches. Gonna try and deliver the knockout one next. The Shiro, he found one, but he wants some more. Alex is a bit late to the party, chilling on the side for now. Set at the top of mid with nothing to do. They got a bit of utility to play with, but ideally, it's just not gonna be something they can work with at this point. Double peak. Perfect by Gambit, and you could see the read. We yeah. can talk about preparation, yeah. we can talk about anti strategy, whatever term you want to use. Nafani in that biblio position in the perfect angle possible, leaving now only S attack with a P51 smoke on the ground, but four targets to be found. Very complicated for him. He's got to take the risk, and it's not going to pay off. Perfect, perfect start from Gambit. Again, I'll come back to this. The positioning from Nafani. I'm not exactly sure if it's just game sense, just realizing the situation and where the risks are coming from. Mm -hmm. But that close angle, he gets right here. You could see how Messi, how surprised Messi is. Yeah. He had no idea someone could be there. And it was brilliant because it was Axel tapping through the smoke, right? He was the one pushed more towards the site. So they were just like, no, no one's going to be in there. Ah, well, you got to think, you got to check every single corner. You don't know what will be lurking around behind you. Cloud9 with a four stop in this one, a lot spent in it. They're going to try and make some magic happen. But look at the weaponry decision making here from Gambit. They can play the long range game in their favor. They want to take map control as well. Not scared of the duels, not scared of the fights. Putting in Hobbit with an MP9 in a close range duel, that's a good idea. You don't want to have a long range duel with an MP9, you want to be up close. And then Nafani with the long range duel with the M4 right here. I like to set up this Nate Cook into her Cloud9 a lot. Oh. He's throwing that at the right timing right here. Oh, yes. Oh. Nade goes up. Lots of damage goes down. He's only getting one player, and actually, they will lose the M4. Floppy pushing on forward. The spray comes through. Shiro's able to tag up Esther tag a little bit more. But this is actually winnable for Cloud9. They're in a good spot. Couple of players low for sure. And this is going to come down to the protocols for Gambit on the retake. They've got the flashes. They've got a molly in the smoke in play as well. Axile patiently waiting. Is he going to check the corner for Alex? He seems to have a good idea that this is going to be playing out, but well, that's not going to work out. Alex is waiting for a flash to come through, and Axile, he's doing all the work, all the damage. The retake is on the go. Nice. Molotov comes into the exact position they need, but Messi, he stands strong. In oh. first, he doesn't expect it from the side, and S attack, he saves the day. Tech 9 in hand around the Cloud 9, desperately needed, and they do manage to pick it up. Gambit, full. So many key duels in that retake. First of all, it starts with Axile besting Alex, finding the opportunity, making it a double kill, and then that fancy little yeah. boost, yeah. sneaky little boost on the side of the smoke. Wasn't expected for Gambit. Good process, good thinking for Cloud9. That's the kind of trick they need to pull if they want to fight back. Now 1-1. One, one. Momentum has been stopped. Gambit not able to carry the form from the former map. If you just tune in right now, as a reminder, Gambit destroyed Cloud9 on Vertigo. We are now looking at one map ahead for Gambit. We see the investment coming in. There's two smokes on Nafani and Axile. An MP9 as well. Not exactly sure. I think it was probably purchased. Yeah. It's a risk in itself. 
but we know it can mow down a couple of enemies. Cloud9, they've always played these uh, anti force by anti very split. They take a lot of map control, they take a lot of information, they make space, and then they pull back. They play together. First of all, they show themselves a little bit, and then they regroup. So, so, so important for Cloud9 to uphold this momentum, win this round, and show a presence on the server, because they haven't been able to so far in this matchup. Winning this one also means that you're automatically most likely going to win the next one, and then we have a scoreline that is called 3-1 for either team, basically. So it's very important for Cloud9. Smokes are winning in now, and Nafani has been playing well so far, has two mates with him. It's a four-man stack. This could be dangerous for Cloud9. Big damage being done. Cloud9, they were the ones to do it last time around, and Essentag and Mezzi, they're pulling it back for them. It was looking very scary. Now it's only Shiro left to deal with, and Cloud9, well... That could have been a really problematic back and forth round, the four subs and how they can work out. Now they've just got to play it super smart, super safe, work together. This should be 100% Cloud9's round. Nothing much Shiro can bring to the table right here. I would highly doubt Cloud9 would give him the opportunity to get two duels. They're probably just going to sit and wait. And for Shiro, it's just about economical damage right here. It's going to be given some targets later on, but the fate of the round is not a discussion anymore. Good trading by s -Lag. We see here, ooh, that was a great shot from Shiro, making it expensive for Cloud9. You look at the money, no one really has bank, and all of them, none of them rather, will carry on the next round with guns in their hands. So there's going to have to be a repurchase. Look at the money from Cloud9. That could be a huge difference maker. We have 3,500 to 4,000 maximum on all of these players. Here we have the uh, beautiful training ability from s -Tag. I talked about him as a very good yeah. second wave, and mm. you can see why good spray control. I was just about to say, I want to know what Cloud9 pays s -Tag, but in fact, we already do know, but <laughs> maybe maybe they should pay him a little bit more, because he's been the best right. player for Cloud9 so far. He's been saving them, I would say. Of course, the start here on Inferno has been good for s -Tag, Messi as well, but the only one fighting back on Vertigo, well, that was s -Tag, so maybe he deserves a bit of a race. Voxic hasn't contributed with much so far, so maybe he can borrow a bit of his Wow. Trick. That's a dangerous uh, Pandora <laughs> box you're opening right here. P Pim is just trying to either bankrupt Cloud9 or just get more Danish players higher money. I yeah, mean, if you're willing to, to spend money, you may as well go all the way. No, uh, hold on a second. <laughs> can you imagine how terrible this could be if you have a salary that's only based on kills? Team would just fall apart. People would bait for each other all the time. Well, what if I told you there is a team right now that where the base and the bonuses are based on how well they place in the HLTV ranking? Uh, yeah, HLTV ranking is not exactly the same as kills, but as I'm talking oh about, boy. Gambit is actually making it really costly for Cloud9. The good gamble coming oh. out of the CIS team, and Messi will fall. What happened? It's the 4v1. s just left. Guys, I have the B side. Where are you guys? It was like in one of these horror movie when, you know, someone get lost in the mansion and then just realize no one is behind him. There's no light. And then there's noise coming out of the uh, room next to you. Still winnable. No armor. But there we go. God. Shiro takes him down. Did we just witness a full anti eco loose from Cloud9? We yeah. did, we did. It was a good gamble from Gambit, though. I kind of feel guilty sure. about raving and salaries, whatever, fantasies, because <laughs> the, gam the gamble from Gambit, that's a tongue twister right here, was pretty good and the kills came through. Cloud9 falling apart. It would be fun to know how much the Gambit players are paid compared to Cloud9, <laughs> wouldn't it? Let's not open that box. Let's <laughs> talk about money. Let's just get excited about right, I'll, I'll give you something else than Maniac. Frankie just kind of gave us a heads up, right? So Gambit is Hobbit is in the leader, the captain of the team. Interesting. But the Fanny is the IGL. So he's the one that not only was fragging out like a madman, but he was getting it done. We talk about these fragging in-game leaders and where we're at in current meta of CS. Well, he's the li living proof of it all. That's why he reminded me so much of Art. Now, Cloud now, they want to go aggressive up towards middle. They want to explode on towards Shiro. That's a good grenade right there. Oh. Does a lot of damage. Doesn't quite get the Molotov, but gets the kill. And that is so, so important. One, two to Shiro. Exile coming in, combining for one. And, you know... Again, but they were able to win a full eco. Cloud9, not so much. And they actually invested into this round as well. Armor was bought, pistols were bought, grenades were bought, and now Cloud9 then found themselves in a terrible position once again. As I said, coming into this game, I feel they need a good start. Because mm. the longer we drag out this game, the more they have to reinvent themselves, the more creative they have to be, and that's when it comes into factor that they have not been together for that long. And look at the money again here for Gambit, right? We spoke about how smart they were being with it. They won the round that obviously was just USPs being invested, but it was Cloud9 that would continue to force and force and force, and now they're sitting two rounds with hardly anything that they've got to play with. You're giving Gambit potentially this 4-2 unless something miraculous happens. Tricky situation for Cloud9 as well. What kind of conclusions do you draw from the rounds you lost? You basically lost to a full eco round. 
maybe a lack of, I want to say, scouting, probing, tasting, seeing where the stack could be. But besides that, we haven't really seen much. We know that Gambit have a very fast double long setup on the A side. The rotation is quite quick from CT spawn. That's an information that Alex will play with, I guess. Gambit have done a tremendous job of taking banana control all these rounds. So for Cloud9, either retaking it, changing the pace of it, changing the way they approach it. If you want to play first level, first degree Counter-Strike, you can go on to a fast A-house explosion, for example. But I feel like it is expected when you're on the down foot. You know, when sure. your back is against the wall, you expect these executes. So for Cloud9, they almost have to win a round by the rules, by the book, and yep. then they can be creative. This round, there's not a lot of hope in. Shiro, he's probably going to have the time of his life together with Hobbit. One, two, three, they combine four, and that is as easy as it gets. A clock coming in there from Alex as well. Well, not much to be said about this round. Nothing invested for Cloud9, but this, the money looking good on Gambit. All players surviving, and as we spoke about, Cloud9, they wanted that good start, and they got exactly the opposite teams. They really did. You thought it was looking good for them, right? They lost the pistol, then they bounce back into it. They get a round that they had no business winning after grabbing an M4. Messi on the boosted spot. S attack there backing him up. But now they forced their way too far. They've cost themselves some rounds. Gambit are up 4 2 CT side. We're now seeing a buy come out of Cloud9. Walks in. Okay, maybe he is an AWP that can work it on T side of Inferno. But right now they don't have the investment to be able to do it. And he wasn't hitting the mark in the first game either. We heard he was having some ping issues. Bit of lag playing a factor there to it. He heard him. Is he gonna go it? He, he heard him. Oh, he heard the move, but oh. he's taking the risk. But one minute and 20 seconds. Nafin is already in the back. Estet like must be hating himself right now. It cannot be a timing. And that's gonna push Cal9 onto the <gasps> side. Axel grabs the first hit. That's three HP only on Alex. Pushed away and look, Gambit back away. They know they're in a huge advantage. The little micro adjustments from Gambit. That's just painful to have someone push behind you at 1 minute 25. I mean, sure, you need to have someone that's supposed to hold it, but how frustrating must that be to already hear that pesky noise of M4 behind you at 125 <laughs> <laughs> in your he's, back? He's without a doubt the Russian art. He's been inspired by the way he's, <laughs> he's playing Counter-Strike and he's doing it, I would say, even better than art is doing it right now. It's, it's fantastic to see from Nephany. Okay, DreamHack Socials need to quickly clip this. Russian art. Yeah, we're going to start off the thing here. Well, he's apparently a better version as of right now. Well, that's the credit we got to give him, right? He's been playing Late hard mom. so far. Well, no doubt Art is a fantastic player, but the way Nefany is playing right now, he's creating so much space and giving so much information to the teammates of Gambit. Now, they have to stand tall now. Coming in is the hit from Cloud9. Mezzi wants to be the front runner on the push into this. Look at the setup from Gambit. They are well aware and ready. Mezzi tries to force his way in, but he instantly gets taken down. There's only Alex left alive. He's on three health and he's dead straight away. Gambit, four alive, money in the bank. Look at this. How many times have we said this? Gambit, right? They've been in plenty of casinos. They've been gambling everything. They're like, woo, 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 sending it all out, building the bank all day long. To me, it feels like the opposite of gambling. This is exact science. This is like the physician, you know, in his lab, just making numbers, crunching them, realizing, okay, there's 99.9 .9 chance I win if I do this. So it's X-Men, you know, the Gambit guy with the cards. Yeah, They're legit the him, and he's playing with the cards. He knows how it's all going to go down. You're making the all the right skills. decisions right here. Boom. It looks very easy. We, we have flashbacks from the way Vertigo started with Gambit winning extremely clean rounds, making a ton of money on the board. Now, Shiro with the right timing on that smoke. It's probably going to trigger Cloud9 to go through it. They respect it. I'm glad to see it. I feel like Cloud9 right now are just not calling off the bluff from Gambit. They're no. falling in all the traps. They're trying to burst in where the defense is really, really strong. Maybe it's about Alex being a little bit tired. You have to think as well. They've been playing so many official games, right? Yeah. That is a new team. How much time do you have between the match to actually change your play style? Nothing. Nothing. No time whatsoever. And that is a big problem. But also, Cloud9 should have a good enough system in place to have done enough research on Gambit to see some of this stuff, right? You'd think so, right? But, but as, Kassad, as we spoke about it... It's, Henry's there, like, Alex is involved. You've got a whole support system. Had it been in a month from now, I would agree. You know, we, we could expect Cloud9 to be able to deal with that. But as of right now, it's still early. Alex, though, trying to do some work. Nefati has to get more than Ooh. one. It's just not messy as well onto Shiro. And all of a sudden, they find themselves in a two versus four. And they'll have to go for the retake or what? Alex is down to one HP. Why is he? Oh, he's passing over the AK, yeah, thank God. I think this is smart, actually. Despite having very good money, there's no need to risk. Yeah. And there's no need to hand over any more guns towards Cloud9. So in a round that is more or less impossible to win, 
they make the best out of it. And the best in this scenario is simply just not to fight it, not to give over any more weapons and give Cloud9 more gifted. That was a little bit of a, you know, sign of life for mm -hmm. Cloud9. Do you know what? I've got to say, when it comes to what Gambit are offering here, they're playing smarter than their experience would say, right? In terms of being together on a team, they're playing ahead of what many players... How many mistakes do you see made by up-and-coming players and stuff like this where they're not taking it seriously? They make peaks or they go overconfident into things. Right now, you're not seeing those mistakes. That save just then is the perfect example of it. It's rather clean. It's rather clean mm. for Gambit. I, I have to agree with you. Again, they, um, they evaluate the situation quite efficiently. They seize the opportunities when they have them, and if they don't, they just play the numbers game. Yeah. They just play the stats, and you can see how much money they have moving on to this round number nine. For Cloud9 now, it's about not being reset. Only Estag and Messi have some money. Boxing is going to try and make his magic with the AWP, but the floor is lava. He can't really stay. That's another Molotov pushing him out. Life oh. is hard for him. He's going to have to use that Molotov. I uh, never understand how these Molotovs spread up. <laughs> Bouncing off the logs. Give him a little L shape to work with. S-Tag wants to force him away himself. Nathalie's going to push on it. Oh, you're oh, a flash. madman. Oh, he's a madman and he does it. S-Tag still oh. hanging there and he gets domed instantly. Gambit shutting down the B aggression from Cloud9. The mollies were perfect. Alex is going to try and force his way up now, but already the damage is done. You've lost two key players and you're in a 4v3. The backup plan needs to be huge now for Cloud9. What do they do from here? Drag out the tempo. Find out what you want to do and go together. You cannot split up anymore. That luxury has been taken away from them. Fantastic play on Banana once again. Gambit being proactive. They're not staring away from the fights. They seek them. They want them. Sure, in a good position here as well. Feels like no matter where Cloud9 is walking on the map, there's always going to be someone from Gambit ready and waiting. Sure, we run. Exile coming in, and this is just perfect team play from Gambit. They're playing some of the best Counter-Strike I've seen all week. Well, it's Monday, but... <laughs> That's, that's, that's like an underhanded compliment. <laughs> All week I've watched. You are one by game. far the best team of the week, and we are Monday. <laughs> but it's really, really well played. We see the uh, the contingency plans coming in from Nafani here because Cloud9 had survived the first 15 seconds of the round, Banana, and then they had themselves used the utility and Nafani with that pop flash. Also, interesting to see how forward Gambit's def defensive positions are. Right, they're not playing on the side, and Pit is stayed in the rafters in the bracket towards top mid. And Cloud9 try to cheat a flash Shiro, punishing them. Axis from behind. Everything is working for Gambit right now, and we see the consequences of that financial battle, financial crisis for Cloud9 right here. They have AKs, two of them, two Galil, a P250, but this looks like a last effort. They lose this, they have no money moving into the next round. I was just about to say, it feels like it's already now in the game a key round. If they lose this one, they could go down 8-3, to three and, and how much can you afford if you're Cloud9 mentally oh. as well? You come off vertigo, you lose bit time, you never in the fight, you never really feel close to winning, and then all of a sudden you go into map number two, where it's supposed to be your playground, and again you go behind. I think there's a limit to how much mentally they can handle. They're experienced players, they should mentally be able to handle it. For now though, this push coming in, in turns, they're just ready, they're waiting. Gambit may have lost the opening pick, but it didn't even matter. Everyone else is getting shut down, Messi's trying to find his way in. He's backed up by Woxic, but still. Gambit, they're well aware of this, the bomb needs to be picked up. They're scrambling for where they want to put it down. Shiro going for the obvious incendiary grenade spot, but it's not going to force them off the position. It's just going to force them to the back of the site for now. Woxic on the plant. Plenty of time to go. He's got himself oh. hidden, but Mezzi, he's gone. Now Woktik to try and clutch it, but only with a Galil. He's heavily outnumbered, he's heavily outgunned, and Gambit pick up another crucial round. You talk about the Molotov for Shiro, that was key. The reason why is because they had to respect that position. They could not plant the bomb behind that coil, so he plants open behind the fountain, which is open to wallbang. Yes. And if they don't, if they wait out the Molotov, then suddenly there's no smoke. So that's a win the Molotov coming out of Shiro right here. Little detail, a little bit of nerdy action, but I can't I like it. And that's why you're here. That's oh. why I love it. That's why I want to get your voice on this more, Maniac. I'm having a good time. I'll, I'll take you back to the uh, the Forge of Masters event that Gambit was playing before Hobbit joined at the end of 2019. These guys came out and they were still starting their rise. They're starting to show some incredible stuff coming out here. But again, we put poised these players. You'll remember people, Shiro, Axel, for as long a time of them finding success. But often in the CIS region, we don't see that success come through, right? They're always held back because the teams don't develop that far. This is something we can work with. Definitely, but they have to be careful now. The first mistake I feel we've seen so far in the game from Exile got punished, but Shiro 
Waiting and waiting to back it up. Good smoke as well. And once again, the take out oh. Timbo. One kill to Hobbit, that's okay. Still a three versus three, but this is the best chance Cloud9 have had to win around. They weren't supposed to win so far in this game. <gasps> The fan's yeah. position. Is it going to get checked? Floppy's just walking forward. He looks for it, but he loses his head instantly. The bomb is now down in the site. Woxic's already been tanked up. He's down to 41 health with a P250 in his hand. The fan's got to check all the corners and sides as well. Got to check his back. Woxic is still hanging around, oh. but Inters is able to deal with him. And now it's Esetag. He may have the weapon in his hand, but again, you're facing off against the full Gambit team who are ready for you You're waiting. Nice first shot hit, but he needs to do a hell of a lot more. They're dancing around each other, but again, Gambit win the fight. We have to give credit to Nafani and his position. Oh, yeah. His understanding of the situation, knowing where the next risk, what's the next logical course of action for Cloud9. He understands the situation where he positioned himself towards CT spawn. Once the bomb is on the ground, the round almost crumbles automatically for Cloud9. So Nafani doing miracles. Shiro as well. He's 14 to 2 at the moment. Interns behind him with 12 4 as well. Not too shabby at all. And that's an 8 3 lead for Gambit on Inferno. I can tell you this now. I Do told it. you about the Berlin Major when I met him first time. He was still studying. He was 18. He's now 19, not studying, full time on CS. And now we see an activated brain play come in. I talked to you. I talked to you about that abs explosion that could come when your back is against the wall. Shiro has been passed on the information. He saw them with the AWP. Now it's about interns with the M4. First two kill and the trade is here for Axel as well. Good crossfire. That's three Cloud9 players on it. Fourth one from Shiro as well. And in a matter of six seconds, Cloud9 oh, homes are crushed. Oh, ho, ho, and five alive. Gambit with the lockdown. Cloud9. They're not flying high no more. They say they get paid the big bucks. But right now, they're not proving it. They're not showing it. Look, the situation is not as bad as we think it is. It's a 9-3 scoreline on the T side of Inferno. Arr. They can do it. Arr. Say they fight back for two more rounds. I'd give them two more rounds, knowing their experience, knowing how they can play Inferno, how the protocols must be known by all of these experienced players. Maybe Mezzi not exactly fitting my narrative right here, but I believe in Cloud9. I think winning one or two rounds could give them enough speed to push it okay. back. I believe they can win one or two rounds. I don't believe they're winning this match. <laughs> James, come on. <laughs> Some imagination. Help me out. I've got your imagination, yeah? <laughs> and then I look at reality and logic, which suggests Gambit. Yeah, I'm a dreamer. Right now. James, I'm a dreamer. Spot on. <laughs> Do you know, actually, oh, did you see my tweet yesterday when Gambit won? I did not. So I did an event and my, I put my son along with me. He had to choose a team logo he liked to predict the team. He picked Gambit. He obviously knew the future was there as well. Smart all the way. It just runs in the family, Maniac. So what happened with you? Wow. <laughs> wow. Why are you going to burn <laughs> me like that, bro? That was too much of a risk. You gave it to me, James. You're supposed to be nice. I expect that from I got Pim. you. I got you, mate. Well, we've all been wondering for quite some time, James, so uh, you may as well answer. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm Speaking leaving. Wondering, Cloud9 right now probably wondering how they can make it work with Tech9, a Deagle, a P250. I'm looking at the utility, only two smokes and a flash. That to me suggests maybe a B play could be on the cards later on. They might try and do some damage on A side, but the positioning suggests they will actually A explode, might be on the cards, but like a mini sand smoke could be what's going to happen. Seems to be the case. I think they want to take mid control first and foremost. Oh. Push Shiro out of his position. The grenade tax a little bit, but not enough to do any significant damage. Now, Exile in a good position again. As soon as they spot that player inside apartments, they know what's coming for them. And Shiro again repositioning himself. There we go. The player jumps out. Exile wins that duel. That was the decoy for Cloud9. Now, look at them wrap around the side. But Gambit again, composed and aware. They're just always on it. Inters. He's out in spawn. He's done a nice bit of damage. He's expecting to push through. He's got to hear the footsteps. Walks it, baked him out. They're trying to play. Oh, Hobbit does come in to back him up, but they've actually lost two weapons the with The time, him. James. The time. Oh, no. Oh, ah, ah. oh, God, that was scary. He's going to be able to plant if he just does it now and sticks it. Alex has to get this kill. Shiro, is he going to check it? This is going to be key. Oh, Flash God. goes. Oh, God. 
But do they know? Do they know about Axile? Coming as well from Banana, I think that's the card that Gambit wants to play. Axile, be careful, my man. They don't know about you. That's an easy kill. Living now, Estetag in a one versus two. He's got to take the kill to them. That's one frag, and then the information is out there. So now Estetag can just play with the time. Axile has 10 HP, no smoke. Estetag trying to big brain that situation, doubling back on his flank. We could see Axile, no idea what's gonna happen. The steps will do it, but no time. Oh, I don't oh. think he has time. He doesn't. Fourth round for Cloud9. A good B wrap from CT Spawn. Yeah, it's really good there. They tried to get a read on it. Inters was ready for it, but they completely swarmed him. Didn't give him a chance. But Cloud9 looked frustrated. They can't be happy with just rounds like that paying off for him because it's once in a blue moon. I was just about to say, you look at the rounds they won so far in this first half, two of them have been scrappy rounds. Two of them have been rounds where they probably shouldn't have won. Hasn't been clean Counter-Strike, hasn't been polished Counter-Strike, hasn't been Cloud9 outsmarting their opponents, out shooting their opponents. It's basically been down to some scrappy clutches where, okay, you show some class, you show some individual brilliance, and that's nice, sure. You still got that going for you, but right now they're hanging on by the thinnest of thinnest margin. They need another couple of rounds. I would say at least one, maybe two, if they want to keep this game competitive coming into the second half. I think Gambit are by far the best playing team right now, and I wouldn't even go as far as saying that the scoreline doesn't even reflect it right now. It could have been much, much worse for Cloud9. Estetag is playing a dangerous game right here. He's being segregated from his teammates. He's alone, playing behind that smoke. Oh, while no. The main task of Cloud9 is taking mid, and a good kill from Estetag. That's going to put the entire defense in disarray. We see on the minimap, Hobbit was willing to rotate because of that kill, but he doubles back. A good read from another the experienced player through the smoke. He finds Messi. Will it be unable to be traded? Yes, Morgan Hand. Floppy will take that occasion all day, every day. Now, Axile, just a little bit late on the trigger. Just some damage onto Woxic and a potential 4v1 on the B side. Oh, tagged as well, though. Shiro, he hits one. It's a leg onto Alex. He needs to get some kills. He's out in the open. He's pinned down completely. Axile trying to flank up into it, but Woxic well aware. And Inters, he's all alone. And he's a little bit slow to the party. They've still got good money, and he's going to save. He doesn't want to fight up into this, and Cloud9 will definitely get the fifth. It does feel like Cloud9 have realized, they have identified that there is a potential weakness towards that wrap A long towards CT spawn. It's now the second time they use that. They did it with the yeah. Tech9s. They do it again with the rifles this time around, catching rotations off guard. Granted, Hobbit was a little bit unfortunate with the timing of the smoke being pulled out. I think it was a grenade. Good trading, good spacing from Cloud9. I told you they needed four or five. I might be good in my word. But we're already looking at Gambit, right? And it's their CT side for now. We talk about their team play. We talk about the synergy. And that's where the T sides come into it. Yeah, I was just looking up the last five games they had on Inferno and how many T rounds they get. And if you just look by the numbers without taking the opponents into context, mm. 11, 6, 7, 8, 11. Their T side on wow. Inferno is strong. And they have some big, big half against Sure, Not team at the same caliber as Cloud9 at least not the, in terms of pay grade, but teams that are up there, you know, teams that are not necessarily bad either. So I think you're right, Maniac. I think five rounds is the absolute minimum you can expect from Cloud9. And I would say six, we got a very competitive game, hopefully on our hands for the second half. It's also going to expect Cloud9's CT side to be good. Which we don't know. It's still an unknown, right, of how much we can see from him. It's a sneaky push in here. Do they know about him? They know it's mm -hmm. a possibility. I don't think they realize how deep he is. Axile alone with a lot of responsibility. Oh! You no, know, Macy's too quick on the trigger. And then, oh, poor interns having the worst timing of his life. Alex, with that easy kill 5v3 now. Clown9 not exactly realizing how easy and free for the take in the A side is. But at the same time, I can understand why they want to take their time. 5v4, it's all about going through the motions, respecting the protocols. Don't let someone like Shiro in the AWP be the difference Ooh. maker. Good spacing. Floppy's here to punish him. Hobbit will have no say in this round whatsoever. Oh, I say that though. Floppy being a little bit risky, my man. Got that haircut for free. Alex pushing him through the smoke. Easy, a 5v1. A clean round. Probably the cleanest we have seen from Cloud9. Definitely. This was much needed from Cloud9. An execution at the end there. We get a 9-6 first half to Gambit, but Cloud9, they find their feet towards the end of it. Is it going to be enough to pull them through to a third and final map? Find out in the second half. We're going into the second half, and Gambit have been putting up one hell of a fight, but Cloud9 
They showed us what they were worth on those last few rounds. They saw a gap towards Arch. They took full advantage of it. And then they found their form. They found their flow. But they need to keep it going, especially on this important pistol round. I right, look at this. We have it right here. That is the sign of Cloud9. Gaining life again. Feeling good, feeling awake, willing to take the fight. Alex. Best Nafani has the first duel, then it's now Interns. Poor Interns along towards Banana. What can he do with the Glock? First kill, good trade. Good cross placement, but he's completely alone now. Granted, the kill is here, but look at this. Abs completely open. That's now a 3v4, but the ASAP will have fallen. Woxic not able to adjust. That's now a bomb plant, three versus four. Still winnable for Gambit, but it's all about the hole. Two in their sight, and Hobbit down in pit for now. Smoke's going to go on out. I'm going to cut some of his vision off, but he's ready for them to push on in. He takes the first few shots, but he needs to back up for sure. They push on into him, and oh. Hobbit's getting it done. Oh. It's just all falling apart for Cloud9. I like the smoke pushing Hobbit out of position, but then again, it's not really that much of a good position he's getting out in, right? Hobbit is, is easy to find a kill, and then the rest of the team from Gambit hitting their shots and... I don't even know what to say right here. Cloud9, they put themselves in a good position. Maniac said it, showing signs of life. They're being aggressive again. They're not scared of making the plays. They're not scared of taking the game to Gambit. But every single time that happens, it seems like Gambit are just one step ahead and waiting for it, ready for it, and good enough to deal with it as well. I must say, I've been thoroughly impressed with the way Gambit has been playing so far. I think their composure on the server right now and the way they conduct themselves in this game against Cloud9, who are still fighting, as Maniac said, is it's great to see from a team that I guess many didn't expect much from. Still feeling confident, Maniac, in the comeback? There's still a chance. There's still a chance. <laughs> 6-10. I'm not ready to throw in the towel for Cloud9 quite yet, but this round is going to be oh so pivotal. We've seen the full investment coming in for Cloud9. So far, they've decided to play the good old 3-2 setup. Undecided for Gambit as to what's going to happen. We see the main share, the lion share of the attack going towards B. They have two smokes. They have a Molotov. Whereas Clown and I'm running a little bit low. I say that those three smokes. Nafani being spotted. But does he pull the trigger? Look at this. The reaction coming in from Estac. He's leaving the B side. There's only one player left to defend it. And that is Floppy with a smoke and a deal. And I guess a dream. Nafani, he's going to sell this fake. And then Floppy, he's going to be in big, big trouble. Oh, what's towards the small bomb center? What? No, they're, they're coming back. They're coming back. They had the right read, but they're going back to the big bomb side. They have everyone in the right position now. Clown 9, three players right here. Still a small one, too. Alex not going to be coming into play. Nathani chipping away with the map 10. Messi not able to adjust with the Eagle. Estag with the second chance. First kid is good, but the trade is perfect. And Woxy can do nothing but cry with the scout. Close quarter combat. Not the best position to find yourself in with that weapon. And once more. Gambit, even though they were walking in a very dangerous situation, you can see the protocols, you can see the trading, the spacing, the pathway through the sites. Clean as hell. And that's a sign of class as well, that despite you may not always make the right decision by then, they couldn't know, you know, they couldn't know Flobby was alone towards this smaller bomb site. But even if you run into a stack, it's not going to end up like Cloud9 in the first half where the protocols are not in there. They still use the utility well, they frag well, they trade frag well, and they use the positions to sort of like, I wouldn't say bait each other, but to make sure there's always a refact potential when they go mm. in towards the bomb side. Right now, what I'm seeing, I got to stress it and say it again and again and again, I guess, until Gambit have won the game, which I think they will winning this round. But they are playing some solid, solid Counter-Strike. I knew they could be good. We saw them half a year ago at, at We Play James, and we saw them play good. But sure. this level they're showing right now, sure, against the Cloud9, they may not be playing up to the same standard they were just a couple of days ago. It's still a very dominant performance. And a performance where I guess we can count the mistakes in one hand still. This is the elevation, right, of hard work paying off. This mm. is a team that have stuck together. Yes, okay, they made one change. Super out. We have Hobbit come in, and it's definitely an, an upgrade. Maybe not in terms of firepower, although Hobbit has dealt his own in experience and what he brings to the table. But you've got to say straight away with this, Gambit's long-term project here is all been about grinding. Look at all the games they play. They're in every cup. They're in every tournament, every qualifier. They are playing like a team in everything, trying to maximize all their opportunities. They've made it to this big stage here. And right now, they could be taking a huge win against Cloud9. If they get this round, which they're heavily favored in, they'll be up 12-6 already. And it doesn't feel like Gambit are just, you know, outsmarting Cloud9. It doesn't no, feel like no, it. Preparation playing. surely comes into play, but it's just how clean and how well organized and disciplined they are when they actually activate 
very, very few mistakes being done by Gambit so far. Alex had an opportunity, gonna hit himself for that one. Just some damage onto Nafany. Meanwhile, three players from Cloud9 gathering towards the B-bomb side. We see the smoke, uh, the smoke, the bomb, sorry, coming in as well for Gambit. So a little bit of a commitment in turns. Not too sure. Guys, is it safe? Yeah, but the Can grenades, I come in with the bomb? The grenades, right? Is tech is waiting with it. There's another player over here that's called Floppy. He's waiting with it. Gets pressure back, and that's very important now. The bomb goes down, but not two nades coming in. Does some damage to interns, but not enough. And as you said, Maniac, again, it seems to, to me that Gambit, they're playing a, a clinical Counter-Strike game right here. They don't make many mistakes, and whenever Cloud9 is just missing a couple of shots, like we saw Alex, well... Yeah, he could have punished that. Yeah. He had an opening, he had the uh, his opponent's back turned to him. Unfortunately, the shots weren't true, and can we get away with murder or Napani as he does with the 9 HP, HP now for Cloud9. It's about damage. Good flash coming in. As he will take Shiro. Good reaction from Inters. Do you want to stick around, mate? You have a Galil. They have USBs, I guess. The frag's always good. You know, on the scoreboard. Feels good now. And look good on your stats. It does look good. <laughs> you never say no. Oh, okay. okay. Insult to injury. For we have like to address good. it, though. Uh, we have to address Voxic so far. He's been playing under pair with what you can expect from Voxic so far in this series, and we're now a map and a half into it, he said eight kills combined on both maps. That is not the Voxic we saw just a couple of days ago. I wonder what's going on. If you're looking for, for players that have done more in the past, I guess Floppy is also a name that we yeah. have to put on the list. We know how pivotal he was in Cloud9's good results so far. Very instrumental in the clutches and hasn't really been activated so far. Speaking of activated, we see the man, Floppy himself, able to adjust two quick kills on to interns and Nafani, that's exactly what I wanted to see from him. That multi-kill ability that Ooh. kind of propels Cloud9 into a good position. Finally, a 5v3, time to breathe. And the nade also went out. Damaged Axile quite heavily. 3v5. Very difficult round now for Gambit. And if Cloud9 can pick this up, four or more alive. That's the dream scenario for him, right? keep themselves in a good position. They can't afford to go up this level of Gambit without the right weaponry, without all the utility they need. That's for sure. Gambit only have one smoke to play with. So there's going to be very little fakes being thrown. We just see Hobbit making a little bit of noise towards Bracket, hoping a rotation will be triggered, but why would it? It's a 5v3, there's nothing to move. S-Attack, that is a warning, my friend. You know that sound. <laughs> it's very singular, it's very particular. You know you're not supposed <laughs> to re-peak. Granted, Floppy has a good position as well. They're going to use an interesting smoke, not towards spawn, but towards a C1, so that you can open that avenue and you can fight back. They found another smoke that could be a difference maker. Oh, the spray oh, comes through. Esetag, you know, he's good for it. He taps away, but Hobbit finds Floppy at the top. He's taken out from Bird's Nest. This puts us in a 2v4, certainly in Cloud9's favor. Esetag just needs to not give him any more of an advantage in it. He fights back. Triumphantly against Hobbit, will finish off Shiro as well. Grabs himself an AWP to pass on over to Woxic. And the defuse comes on in. A seventh round on the board, but now it's about chaining these rounds together successfully. Apply this pressure towards Gambit, make him feel uncomfortable. That's what Cloud9's supposed to do here. Surely, good, good hold by both Esetek and Flobby. Winning the initial duel towards Banana, that is so, so important for the team and for the confidence as well. Had they not won these rounds, well, they don't have a lot of rounds to give off of right now. Gambit, they are pressuring them right now. Still a lot of money in the bank. AWP on towards Shiro. He decides to play it on the T side, so we also have to keep an eye out for where he expects and where he wants to go to find the impact. It's a rough map to be the T side of the AWP play on. It's hard to find the kills. It's hard to get into the rounds, at least early stage. Whereas if you get the bomb down, then an AWP may as well be one of the most valuable weapons you can have in your hands when the bomb has been planted. Gambit again, Hobbit seeking, sneaking around. We're only 20 seconds into the round and he's already up deep inside Cloud9's apartments. Oh, Woxic's gonna go for an aggressive position with his teammates there. Smoke goes down and they weren't gonna be pushed away from it. It's just a trade out for now though, messing out the equation. Do have the double up setup coming in for Cloud9. Oh. Yes, missing the shot, and he's going to pressure it out of the side now. Nobody else to help him, and they lose control. This is going to be a retake scenario now. That's simply too easy. And it's really hard to retake this B site. A double up setup in play for the retake is not what I would want to see here. S-Attack trying to spam him up. 
Trying to frag him up, but it's not going to work. No shots are going to connect. And if I'm Cloud9, you might think about falling away. You've got a bit of utility for sure. They seem to want to fight for now, but Hobbit... He's able to get away with one. Oh, and that's death attack going down. You cannot fight this any longer. Shiro might even go for a poke again. He might be cheeky as you like. He wants to make it all go in their favor. And he's forced the Cloud9 team away. Key round. As soon as Hobbit finds the Lurk towards Banana, the round is over because Gambit know that they only have to worry about that oh, flank. Oh. Speaking of which, Hobbit will add insult to injury. Floppy's down. That's now just one AWP being carried away on the next round. Gambit finding the opening on S attack that was alone with the AWP. Unfortunately, when you miss that shot playing from CT spawn, you're done for. You can only play the retake. And I want to ask you, I want to hear your take on that. If you're the sole player towards that bomb side, you're playing with an AWP and you're well aware that you have two ops on your team already, is that not a, a very risky position to be in? You have to go out banana, fight for the control, or at least be towards side of coils where you can refight or at least try to get some kills. If you give up the bomb side in a four versus four and you have to retake with two AWPs, is that not almost giving up the round by per default? It was very complicated. Cloud9's plan was to retake Bracket with four players. They did it. When they did, it was a one-for-one -one trade, so they couldn't really get away with it or not the advantage they wanted to have. As a result, I think Esetag's loneliness was kind of prolonged, and he wasn't supposed to be long, uh, alone sorry, for too, too long, and that trade was a problem. I agree with you. He, he could have played from Koi, for example. But again, CT spawn is a pretty standard position. If, if he had gotten that shot through the first smoke and the first flash, then play passive, that would have been it. It would have sure. been one kill staying alive. I wouldn't mind it too, too much. But unfortunately, not connecting the shot now for Cloud9. It's do or die. If you look at their finances, you realize how important that mm -hmm. round is. There's an MP9 on Floppy. It's all he could afford. s playing alone. Banana is going to get pushed out. Good job by Gambit to take some map control. And s he's feeling frisky. He's staying very close. That could be dangerous. He needs to be oh so careful. And if they bait out some of his utility as well, if they do want to push in, he's the lone defender on the B side. It's not a position you want to be in. Oh, the spam coming through from Floppy there. He's going to do some chip damage towards the Fanny. That's the kill. That's the That's kill they needed. But Estag is alone anyway. Alex is going to be out of scenario, so it's all on Estag. Good oh. Molotov M4 right. Cross the placement as well, ready for the second one. Can he make it two? That would be the difference maker. He cannot interstress this on him. You cannot do that. That's oh. not fair. Voxic somehow winning the duel with the USP. And now Indrance is alone in the 1v3. 80 seconds to play with. No HP, no Molotov. And Alex retakes him. That was confusing as hell, but Clown oh. get away with it. Get away with it is the key word there. Confusion, chaotic. Mm. S attack left alone for far too long. The B hit comes in, but he does enough. He, he does, does enough. enough. If he didn't get that kill onto Axile, it's a completely different story. That was the key pickup. And Alex managing to get the flank coming in from the Fanny. They were well aware of it. They were able to put it in, but it wasn't pretty. But it was Martinez as well, right? Because you saw Alex just spray a guy through the spawn in CT smoke. And it's like that kill, you can't expect to hit that. That was, I wouldn't say lucky, but it happens once in a while. And then Voxic all of a sudden pulling out his USP and hitting a shot, which we haven't seen much of from him this game so far. That was a nice USP shot. In turns, he gets caught off guard, takes a lot of damage by the Molotov down to 51 HP. It seems to me that Cloud9 slowly but surely are starting to get warmed up into this game. They're still playing with confidence. I think that's good to see. They're not afraid of making the plays. They're not afraid of taking banana control. They're not afraid of fighting. And that is always a great sign, especially when you're behind. I cannot understate the importance of that round. Yeah. It is going to be key. It was make or break. Finance. It would have been GG. Yeah. Most likely. It would have been, what, 14-7. They would have been on an eco. Definitely 15. 80% sure for Gambit Good at that shot. point. What's sure for Gambit right now, though, is they're heavily outnumbered and gunned. Instantly floppy domes in one. Hobbit's trying to flank around a bit in... Yeah, Woxie has a lot of information. Yeah. He's, he's got everything. So as long as Woxie... And you could see the rotation cheating out of Alex. That could actually backfire heavily for Cloud9. Because Woxie has that deep information, Alex is comfortable rotating towards the B bomb side. But now with 30 seconds on the clock for Messi, he's going to be pretty much alone. Woxie is close to him. He's going to put down that smoke towards Aps. But that's not going to discourage them from jumping out. So it's going to be Messi or nothing. First kill, granted, that's actually going on. Second kill from Messi, stepping up to the plate when they need him the most. Woxic feeling frisky going in through the smoke oh, and the oh, backup wow. is here. Good job from Lionel Messi. <laughs> 
you had to get it in. How dare you? You jump in the gun a little bit there. <laughs> How dare you? you? He had done it. He's, a, he's allowed to be called King to Messi. Go. He's allowed to be called King. No, he is not Lionel Messi yet. Yeah. But the joke is too good to miss, or too bad to miss, either way you look at it. <laughs> Points for trying. <laughs> <laughs> Participation award for Maniac on that one. I'll, I'll be happy with it so far. I'll be happy with it. When was the last time we saw Cloud9 having a strong hand and strong control on the finances of a game? Right, oh, the right now time. they have it. They have some money in the bank. We see Wuxik with uh, 4,500. But for Gambit, finally, that's the sound of the Glocks chirping away in the trees. Whereas for Gambit, well, they are struggling a little bit when it comes to the financial situation. Unfortunately, they couldn't bring in the money they had on Vertigo. If they could, it would have been nice. Right now, they have to take a tactical timeout, maybe find out where is the weak link within Cloud9. And honestly speaking, Voxic has been missing a couple of shots. He's still fighting, still playing with confidence. I think that in itself is a very strong character when you're not hitting your shots, when you're not feeling it, but still you're able to go for the fights and you don't let your team down by not going for set fights. I think that's important, but that is a weak link within Cloud9. You, you talk about risks, you talk about potential for weakness for Cloud9. So far, they put so much pressure onto Estetag. Alex is cheating his way out the B-bomb site so often, and Estetag has a lot on his shoulders, so if he were to miss key, a key kill at a key moment, that could just be it. Now, this round should just be about having fun. I say that though, Wuxix is missing one kill. He's gonna have to play it safe, making sure his rotation is close to him. That's Alex right here, Messi in the pit. Again, upgraded pistols should be a walk in the park for Cloud9. There should be no yeah, doubt. Yeah. Simple stuff, no problem at all. Gambit will even back away and try and do something, but they're just walking into their doom. There's nothing really going to happen on a round like this. Nah, it's all about doing as much damage as possible, and in this round, that means none. Now, this is the tipping point for Gambit, right? You're being pressured now, it's getting closer. The you're certainly in this uncomfortable position yourselves. How do you handle this? Yeah, because it's the first time in the game they're actually being pressured to the brink, right? They have to find out a solution to how to attack this Cloud9 team right now. They're on a good streak of rounds right now. They're playing well, as yep. Maniac said as well. s -Attack really doing a solid job towards the smaller bomb side. And now Voxic as well, hitting a couple of shots. Maybe that could be signs of life for him. So, first time in the game where, as you said, Matthew, that Cloud9 in control, both financially, but also in terms of the gameplay on the server right now. For the first time tonight, I feel they look like the better team in this instance. Feels wild to say it, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, Does. it had to happen at some point. I feel like Hobbit has been pretty much alone, but as I say, that the pop flash oh. is perfect. Oh. Estag's gonna mow them down with the MP9. Floppy, man, I give you these two kills, because your flash was golden. That's the difference made by here for Cloud9. They're being proactive, they're taking the fight. Alex is going to get rid of that A Lurk from Hobbit, leaving interns and Nafani in a 2v4. They have a full set of utilities to play with, but what's not going to miss this time around, and a clean round from Cloud9. We talk about momentum shifting, we talk about Cloud9 fighting confidence. If that play doesn't scream it, then I don't know. What would you do now if you're Gambit? Is this the toy point where you call a timeout? Yeah, definitely. Call a timeout. I know you just had one, but take another one and, yeah. and find out what it's went too wrong. Close. It's too close, but it's also too dominant from Cloud9, right? They have the last couple of rounds, they have had the right place. That flash right there from Floppy, that was fantastic. And if they can continue to come up with innovative plays like that, then it doesn't matter what <laughs> Gambit are talking about right now, they're gonna struggle. <laughs> Thanks for the content, Henry. On his current salary, Mezzi would need to play for Finley 15 years to buy S Attack. To be fair, I probably need to cast 15 years as well to buy him, so... No. What are you on about? I don't know how much you're getting paid. Rich boy over here. Lewis bank account and all that. Speaking of s -Attack, that move with the MP9, I feel like that was such a heavy blow to Gambit because they had had this, this time out. They figured out a plan of attack. They wanted to run the perfect strategies and then out of the blue, out of the shadow comes flying s -Attack with the perfect pop flash and then the 25, 30 seconds you've spent trying to figure out what you're going to do, they just was taken away from you. Oh. You've been caught off guard. That could be a huge problem. s you're going to have to step big time. Oh, no. Daphne stepping in his own flames. It's never a good idea. The floor is lava for you, man. 4v3 now. The swap nice. failed. Okay, seems like Cloud9 there will indeed go. stabilize. I got excited a little bit here. <laughs> it was potential for one of those chaotic rounds, the fast B pressure coming in. With but good reason. Let's yeah. be honest, if Nafani wouldn't have died there, they would have stayed alive four players and they could have smoked s -Attack out of CT spawn. I don't know why their smoke failed, but they probably got a little bit stressed out in that situation. They knew they had to enter the bomb site as fast as possible if they were to win that round. Gambit close but not close enough. And now Cloud9 finds himself in a somewhat comfortable position. 
this doesn't get much closer. This is where we need to see Shiro with that AWP try and find some success. You look, he went to peak here at mid, but instead he ate the grenade from Woxic. And he's already down incredibly low. B pressure coming back in. S tag wants to push on it. Always being tapped up. We haven't seen a lot of pressure from Gambit coming on towards Bracket. Mostly it's been Hobbit alone, trying to find Lurks, trying to find duels. And this time around, they do realize that it might be an opening. It might be an avenue of development for them. So we'll see the protocols, the basic utilities being thrown towards Bracket. That's now some map control being taken. We see on the mini map, that is S attack rotating away. Wasik mm -hmm. is now posted alone with the sniper towards Banana. That's a really strong setup, the 4-1. Astralis used to do it 25 years ago with the Vice. So everyone here, speaking of which, Woxic now missing a shot. You have no say in this round anymore. You have to fall back and call for rotation. That's Esta coming in, but will Gambit hit too quickly? Hobbit's still lurking, but this has been a very obvious position for him round after round. This is the predictable element of Gambit that we haven't seen just yet. They're not mixing it up so much. They continue to try and barrel into this B-bomb site. And s tag he's been ready for it. Oh, just in the timing. He jumps up and he doesn't go down. He still gets the kill. Inter shuts him down eventually, but now it's up to Woxic to come up huge. He's come alive in these last few rounds. He's got the backup of his teammates now as well. Hobbit's lurk is non-existent as he's joined the site. He's come into the mix. The spray coming through there as well. Shiro still on the orb, still down on 44 health since that initial grenade that went down mid. Can he go in for a poke anywhere? Floppy's so low on health. Gambit need this round. It is crucial. And Alex, well, he's putting an end to it. Inters wants to try and make some magic happen, but now they're both in the same area. This is not what they want to see. Orpshot landed. Oh, oh they're not ready for it. Shiro, he gets it against Woxic. Two players to the back of the B site. And Gambit get their full team. What a round, what a clutch, what a play by interns as well. Standing top of the third box, getting the first kill, falling down, baiting for Shiro. Obviously dying at the end of here, but Shiro not missing a shot. That was a nice retake from Cloud9. Good flash coming in, good pressure up towards Banana. But at that point, when you have so good players and so good positions, if you're Gambit, then it's out of your hands if you're Cloud9. They couldn't have done more than they did, and yet still lost. Talk about the flash and the utility truly was the MVP of that retake. Mm -hmm. Everyone was dry. Just one flash for Cloud9. They used it to great avail, but Infern was just too beautiful with the M4. So oh! can't, can't retake control. Axel is good for one. Floppy has the trade and Alex is already on his way to secure that side. But here might be a timing. Do they go through the smoke? Do they believe in that possibility? Boxy would have loved it. <laughs> behind with the AWP just... Pity, 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 come here through the smoke. But it's not going to come through. <laughs> Messi is now posted in the pit. Moving around, trying to get his own position. But now, it's again a situation we have seen in the past that abs explosion, but Messi switches things around. Oh, he's in a good position for it. He's got Woxing backing him up as well. Zero, only good for one. They would have heard that tick away as well. Throws out the molly position, 100% no. Woxic trying to push on it. The nades are going out. There's just too much happening all around him. They put an end to him. Cloud9 get the 13th. They'll avoid themselves from being put too far down behind. And Gambit, they just can't chain these rounds together. It's broken. Props to Mezzi. Props to Mezzi for changing his position at the very end. We yeah. knew that situation happened in the past. He was playing towards pit, and the first kill is pretty much granted, offered to him, because he takes Gambit by surprise. And now, as we see on the right-hand side, the consequences of that round are huge. Gambit are going in with the half buy, almost like an not an eco round, but very little. And they try and play the speed card. The flash is perfect. Inter is able to trade, but Flop is too good with the AK. That's four Gambit players on the ground, make it a fifth. 14 to 14, round number 28. I want my first overtime. Casted, right? <laughs> this may be pimp why we didn't give him a mic before. <laughs> I said I wanted him to talk I'm more. sorry I'm having we've a good just, time. We've let him off the rails, you know. Maniac Unchained. Someone do some magic. I mean, sometimes when kids get too much sugar, it gets out of hand, but um, Drinking water. can't blame him. Can't blame him. Excitement is good, and I agree with you. I wouldn't mind an overtime this time around. Match here. I think both teams have been playing well in the beginning. Of course, Gambit, the better team now. Cloud9 finally found Ooh. some footing in this game. Grenade is good from Voxic. Does a lot of damage. Shiro Ooh. hitting a shot again. Fantastic. 
He's really come to life the last couple of rounds. The game walks into the opening. But Axel's gonna find one of his own. Alex spraying it out, but he's only able to get one. Woxic pushed back. They don't want to push into him, though. He's got the orb, but they've got the sight. The bomb has been planted, and Hobbit's position could be crucial. Axel's up high. He's got cover from the smoke, and he sprayed oh. into one. Enough damage. Hobbit was there as well, but now his position's known. The grenades go out, and it's up to Esetag on Woxic, but Woxic all alone. Esetag can't even get the refrag in there as Gambit. They sit poised and ready to get to the 15th point. The dual Axile wins versus Messi is worth a million dollar. A million dollar. Messi oh, had nice no spider. time to adjust. No time. Oh my god, he did it. All right, I, I'll give that one to you. You can have it. Messi, which I talked about, had been instrumental on these hay holes this time around. No opportunity to fight whatsoever. The entry is clean. Even though Wuxik had done a good job, Axile removes him from the equation. Hobbit is quick on the trigger for that trade towards side. And with it, we know how complicated these retakes can be. 15 to 14. And a tactical timeout called by Gambit. They understand how crucial the situation is. And I just want to give some credit here to Gambit as well. We saw them play fast a couple of rounds where it didn't work at all. We saw Floppy shut him down. We saw S attack shut him down. Yet, they didn't stay away from the fast counter strike. They just changed their approach. Instead of going up towards S attack and Floppy, who have been showing themselves to be some good players on the CT side, they changed it up and they went aggressive towards a bomb side. And this time around, as Maniac said, that trade threat coming in from Exile. That was so, so, so important, and that was enough. Maybe they found the weak link winning Cloud9, and now they find themselves in a position where they can take down the Colossus. Two. It's certainly on the cards, but it's gonna take one more solid round, and that's a nice start. Floppy gets tagged to 35, forced away by the Molly straight away as well. There's no B presence either here from Cloud9. S tags at the back. Again. Oh, he gets picked off, though. Smoke goes down. Backup's being called for. Axel's pushing on in, and he's spraying out. He's done so much damage, but couldn't let himself to kill. Where was the smoke? How is he alive? Luck. Wings. A lucky charm. <laughs> A bit of that hope as well, you know. We've seen plenty of it throughout this game. Axel's just pushing on it. He's feeling it. He wants to close it out. He believes it can happen here. He's right on the spot. Oh. He takes down Floppy as well, but then his teammate finishes him off. They're trying to give Cloud9 a way in. They've got to be oh so careful. He pulls out the pistol. It's not working out. Now it's all on Hobbit, oh! the bunny, but the nade comes in. Hobbit, he did it at a major before, and he's done it again when it matters the most. Grenades are flying, and Mezzi goes down 16-14, and Gambit take down Cloud9.